of the skull. So we'll cover facial bones, anatomy. I'm not going to go through all the facial bones today for positioning, so I am going to limit it to whatever the syllabus is. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop uh, after four bits for positioning. So we'll cover anatomy first, and then we'll do positioning. I was just having a conversation with, with Nick, and one of the things that you're going to find with the positioning of the skull and the facial bones is that it's very repetitive. Okay, so a lot of the uh, baselines that we use, a lot of the angles that we use, it's done over and over and over and over again. It just depends, are we up here or are we down here? Okay, but the positioning criteria and basically central ray criteria is almost identical. So it sounds like there's a lot, but there really isn't. Okay. All right, so facial bones and paranasal. Does that look like Raquel? <laughs> or Cal's sister, maybe? No, no, no. no. Like the eyes. Go. Like the eyes. <laughs> Come up here. No. <laughs> Raquel's much prettier. <laughs> oh, did you hear Nick? Did you hear Nick say That's my daughter. <laughs> you said Raquel's much prettier. That's my adopted daughter in here. Adopted daughter? Yeah. <laughs> you can't be that much older. No, he's my dad. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so facial bones. <laughs> so the facial bones consist of a pair of maxillas. I say maxillas, so just bear with me. Maxillas. Uh, uh, a pair of zygomas. What, what, what are the zygomas? Okay, your cheeks. Okay. Your lacrimal bones, nasal bones, the inferior nasal concha, two palatine bones, one vomer, and one mandible. So I did put an asterisk here because with the palatine and vomer, these are uh, structures that can be easily seen on the outside because they're, they are interior. Um, so 14 in total. You guys are gonna have to help me here because I really don't see color very well. Okay. So what is the maxilla? Blue. Blue. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so this is, this is the maxilla right here, so that's that's part of the, the mouth. So this is the upper, I say that we have a lower jaw and then we have an upper jaw. Okay, so that's the maxilla. Then we have our cheekbones here, a pair of nasal bones, which is the, the bridge of your nose. So most of your nose is composed of, of cartilage, right? Yeah. So there's only a small portion of your nose that's composed of bone. Um, and then we've got the inferior nasal concha here, which is found within the nasal cavity. Um, so the conchas, you have a uh, superior and a middle concha. I think we talked about that last week with the eth ethmoid one, right? Ethmoid bone. So this is the third part, and it's a separate bone altogether. And it's under the category of facial bones. So the other conche, superior and middle, are part of the Eth cranial bones. So it's not the that's not the ethmoid bone itself. It's part of the ethmoid. Yeah. Okay. But it's, yeah, but it's part of the cranial. Gotcha. Okay. So the inferior is part of the, the facial bones, and then the other one here is the lacrimal bone that's related or um, related to the uh, your tear ducts, and then bone the vomer is what's going to form the nasal spine that goes down the middle, okay? So we're gonna cover that there in just a moment. And then the palatine bones, you'll find that uh, in the oral cavity. So that's gonna be found in the back of the mouth, okay? Um, so beginning with the, the maxilla. So the maxilla, they're two separate bones. You have a left and a right. And they fuse down the middle here, and you guys, that was one of the anatomical structures that you had to find in, in your lab, okay, which is the anti anterior nasal spine. So you had to look through your book to find wherever the anterior nasal spine was. Yeah, I missed that one. <laughs> so a lot of you guys were up here near the orbits. This is the nasal bone. The okay, nasal bones are up Thank here, and the anterior nasal spine is down <laughs> here, but related to the maxilla, okay? <laughs> We have several uh, several processes here. We have the frontal process A, and this articulates with what? B. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay. 
So the frontal process articulates with what bone? Frontal bone. The frontal bone. Okay. So this is the frontal bone. Then you have your zygomatic process, which articulates with what? Temporal. Bone. Temporal. Not the temporal. Zygomatic, zygomatic arch. Zygomatic of the temporal. Okay. This is the zygoma. Yeah. This is your cheekbone. Okay, so it goes maxilla. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. So there's there's a middleman in between. The zygoma, the zygoma or the cheekbone is the in betweener. Okay, so this articulates with the zygoma, and then from the zygoma, it articulates with now what? Temporal bone. The temporal bone. Okay. All right. Then another process is the alveolar process. Okay, the bump on the uh, the maxilla where the teeth. upper teeth are inserted, and then the cantheon. The cantheon is the landmark that we use for a lot of the skull views. It's not, it's not easily palpable because we always say it's, now, it's right at the bottom of, of your nose and above your lip. But it is a true structure on the, the maxilla, which is right before <laughs> the, uh, the spine deep. starts to raise up off of that. So there is a little indentation there that's known as the cantheon. So maxilla is the largest immovable bone of the face. It articulates with two cranial bones and seven facial bones. You guys have this slide, right? So you have a list of all the bones that it articulates mm -hmm. with. Wow. <coughs> Sorry, I gotta answer this. <laughs> yes, I'm available. <laughs> okay, so um Holla. So there was a question about, I'm gonna change, change gears here for just a moment. There was a question about um, Gary's uh, wife's service. So it is gonna be next week, okay. which is awesome. on a Monday and a Tuesday. I know you guys are on spring break. Um, so if you can attend, that would be great. If you can't, that's, that's, that's Did okay. Did they say where it's gonna be at yet? Um, um, so. Yeah, like Monday's a viewing. The exact dates, because I, I can't, I can, I'm huh? getting a lot of different messages. What? So let me make sure I got the correct one here. Okay, so you know, um, like, just like a memorial service. So yeah. the memorial service yeah. is Tuesday, on a the Monday. It's on a Monday at St. Peter Channel Catholic Church, starting at 6:15, 6:15 p.m. That's the service, right? That's, that's a memorial. the service. Okay, that's the that's the prayer service. Uh, St. Peter Channel Catholic Church. So, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just email the information okay. to you guys. Yeah. So it's going to be the the service is going to be in Hawaiian Gardens. That's on Monday, the 26th, at 6:15. So it's in the evening, and then the funeral is going to be uh, Forest Lawn. In uh, right there in, off in of Lincoln. Cyprus. Yeah, okay. yeah, right off of Lincoln, and that's going to be on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Okay, so it's all local. Okay, and I'll, I'll send you guys the information. All right, um, any questions here on the upper jaw? Mm -hmm. All right, and within the maxilla, there is an opening. This is where you're going to find the uh, air filled cavity, the maxillary sinuses. So what's the whole purpose of the sinuses? Does anybody know? To warm air. To get infected. To get infected. <laughs> yes. Okay. So they, they, they say there's there's been an argu there's been an argument. First of all, it's just to make your head lighter. Okay, that was one of the arguments. The other one is it provides lubrication for other parts of your head. Okay, so it provides some kind of lubrication. Temperature, moisture. Uh, no, that's over here in the. That's the conchas, right? So yeah, that's that's where the, the fluids uh, delivers through the concha nasal cavity. Uh, but it's supposedly it's supposed to make your head lighter. It's supposed to provide some kind of lubricant or moisturizer in your brain. But again, there's a whole bunch. It of just causes things. problems. Yeah, it can, be, it can be very problematic. Okay, so the first first set of sinuses is found in the maxilla. You do have a pair. Um, the maxilla helps form three cavities, including the mouth, nasal, and the orbit. And again, it does form right in the middle uh, to form the anterior nasal cavity. 
We already covered the three processes. We have the frontal process that articulates with the frontal bone, zygomatic process articulates with the zygoma, and then the alveolar process for insertion of the upper teeth. The fourth one here is the palatine process, and this does help form the hard palate. Okay? So the hard palate is broken up into two different sections. The hard palate is, first of all, majority of it is formed by the maxilla. Okay, so the majority of it is formed by the maxilla. The back side of the hard palate is formed by the other set of facial bones, which is the palatine bones. Okay? So don't get these confused. This is the palatine process of the maxilla. Of the maxilla. Okay? It's the process. And then in the back of that, in the back of the mouth of the hard palate, is the palatine bones. It's a separate facial bone altogether. That's one that's hard to see, you said, right? These are both hard to see. Okay. And then if we're looking at the inferior superior view of the, uh, of the hard palate, you have the two bony projections down here. And we talked about this last week. It's the uh, pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone that hangs right below that. Okay, so the palatine bone, we'll talk about this later, it does have a horizontal portion, goes across, and also has a vertical uh, portion that goes up. So it almost looks like a football post, football goal post. Did I say that correctly? Uprights. Alex, uprights, goal posts? Yeah. Okay. I'm asking you because you're the former, former football player, right? Yeah. yeah. I wasn't picking on you just because you know your stuff. <laughs> All right, the cheekbones. I added a couple of things here because the, the book and the chapter just put up a cheekbone without any anatomical areas pointed to it. They made it so simple. So, so we have the cheekbone or the zygoma. Uh, it has different processes for it to articulate with other bones. So. We have this process, I think we're gonna add that, okay. So here we're here is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, okay? So then this is the zygomatic process. I'm sorry, temporal process of the zygomatic bone over here. What's that other one that I, okay. Did I do that right? Yeah, temporal yeah. process of the zygomatic bone, mm -hmm. and then this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. So they're just vice versa. Right. And what it forms is the zygomatic arch. So I think that was the only things that I added on here. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That was it? Okay. Well, please. Um, please. So the temporal process of the zygoma and the zygomatic process of the temporal. Zygoma is the actual name of the bone, and if you, if you want to describe the bone, it's a zygomatic bone. How are we doing? Articulates with three cranial bones and one facial bone, so it articulates with the frontal, temporal, and the sphenoid, and then one facial bone, which is the maxilla. and the lacrimal bones. So the nasal bones and the lacrimal bones each articulate with two cranial bones. Okay, the lacrimal articulates with the frontal, ethmoid, maxilla, and the inferior nasal concha, while the nasal bone articulates with the frontals, ethmoid, maxilla, and also the other nasal bone. Okay. Very thin bones, very thin bones. So when we're taking x-rays, especially of the nasal bones, we have to use very low KV and very mass because we, 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 don't, we don't want to burn it out during the procedure otherwise if it's overexposed okay uh, you guys are familiar with the nasion so that's the very top of the bridge of your nose it's the very top of the nasal bones they are two separate bones 
okay? So it is possible to fracture one and not the other. <clears throat> okay, are we good? All right. <coughs> the inferior nasal concha is a separate bone, and we said the other concha, the superior and the middle, are formed by the ethmoid bone. Okay, which is part of the cranium. Okay, so the three sets of conchae, they're responsible for warming up and cleaning the incoming air before it does reach the lungs. Now, over here, we were talking about the horizontal portion of the palatine, so it's flat when you're looking at it this way. And then if we were to turn the bone around, now it's going to look like that goal post. So there is a horizontal portion and also a vertical portion of the palatine bone. And we'll cover that here in just a moment. Okay, do we have any questions about the, the conche, also known as turbinates? So, so the superior and the middle are part of the ethmoid bone. Superior and middle are part of the ethmoid. And the nasal is its own separate bone. I mean, and the, the, the inferior, inferior is its own, its own, own separate bone, bone by itself. Yes. But the three together form the nasal the, concha. The nasal concha. Yes. Okay. Any questions? All right. So here is the palatine bone. So when you're looking at it from in the inferior view, again, you have a horizontal uh, portion. Now, if you were to turn it directly in front of you, now you also have the vertical or what they call the perpendicular portions of the palatine bone. Okay, so it is its own bone altogether. And every time I see, so this is what it looks like. Ted Darth Vader. It looks like Darth Vader, <laughs> right? You guys know uh, Senator Palatine? Is it Senator Palatine? Palpatine. Senator Palpatine. Okay. <laughs> so every, when I ever see this, I do th I do think of the Empire and Darth Vader. Okay. You like your Star Wars, huh? <laughs> my sister worked, my sister worked for George Lucas really? almost all her life. Oh, okay. Really? Makes sense. Yeah. She did. That's pretty she, cool. She worked for him until they sold their uh, until they sold his empire to Disney. Yeah. She worked for him almost all his life. She was in charge of licensing. Which meant that every birthdays, every Christmas, every anniversaries, I got something Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they're collectibles. Yeah, man. yeah they're collectibles. Yeah, but I got rid of them. That was a stupid thing. He's like, wait, can I have that back? <laughs> yeah. So she, yeah, she was um, head of licensing. So she'd come down. She lives in San Francisco. So she would come down on occasion and go to the different stores mm -hmm. and see if anybody was violating um, uh, what do you call those, like copyrights, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. If they were producing things that weren't authorized by, by George Lucas. Ceased and assist. Yeah. So she made a killing for doing that, but now not anymore. Okay. Any questions on the palatine bones? Okay. The bony nasal septum. The bony nasal septum is formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the vertical plate of the vomer. So this is what it looks like anterior posterior, so front view. If you were to put it on its side, it is this entire plate. Okay, so this is the vomer. Okay, so the vomer has basically two different parts. It has a vertical plate and it has the wings <coughs> at the very top. And when you line these two up together, the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the vertical plate of the vomer, that's where you get that thin line that goes down the nasal cavity. I don't know if I have a picture of that. Actually, okay, so, so yeah, so you have this thin na bony nasal cavity that's, uh, again, comprised of the ethmoid bone and then the vomer. Well demonstrated, and this is what we call the, the waters view. The waters view for uh, evaluating the, the maxillary sinuses and the organs. Any questions here? We good? All right. The mandible, the parts of the mandible. All right, so where am I going to begin here? Two major parts, two major parts of the mandible. The grandma. Okay. This is the ramus, okay, which projects downwards mm -hmm. and then goes anteriorly. This mm -hmm. is now the body. The area in which it makes the curve, what is, what is this called? Gonion. 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 Okay, so we have the gonion over there. 
if we go up to the very top above the ramus, we have the condyloid process, and this is what forms what? TMJ. The TMJ. Mm -hmm. So this fits in, into the fossa of what bone? The temporal. Temporal, temporal mandibular. Is it up there? Temporal mandibular joint. So the cond uh, condylar process and the uh, fossa, the fossa of the temporal bone forms, forms the TMJ. All right, the anterior part of this section over here, so we have the condylar or condyloid. Here we have the coronoid. C, we did that the notch. Okay, between the two processes forms the mandibular notch. Okay, so we got ramus, we got body effect going in. Oh, up here on, the, on H. H is the mental foramen. So the mental foramen is where the mental artery and vein and nerves for the lower lip and chin are located. Okay. The very tip of your chin, that's known as your mental point. And then we also have the symphysis menti. I don't know what's between. Are these two different colors? No. No. Yes. I mean, like. Okay, because J is supposed to be pointing here, not here. Oh. Okay, so J is the menti where the two parts of the mandible join, uh, join up. It's the very peak of the, the, the mandible at the chin. It's the uh, symphysis menti. Okay, so that's incorrect. Yeah. In the very tip? The very tip right here, just the, the front of it. Because that should not be continuous. It should be right here. Okay, any questions here? Are we good on this one? Mm -hmm. Now again, it's not—it's not like the maxillae. It is just one one bone. What I'm saying is just where the two sides meet is the symphysis menti. Okay, that's where the two sides meet. Okay. Here is a SMV projection, a submental projection of the the jaw. Um, so at the very top there is the mentum, and then we have the superimposition of the, the body. And the ramus is down here, and then the coronoid process and the condyloid. Which one is the one that articulates with the uh, forms the TMJ? The coronoid or the con uh, con condyle? Condyles. Condyle. All right. You guys remember that <coughs> perpendicular plate that we were talking about? Mm -hmm. This is it right here. I'm just saying the bone. <laughs> what happened? Everyone okay? Yeah. Okay. So this is the bone right here. A, uh, oh, yeah, this is probably good to know. So right anterior to the EAM is where you're going to find the, the, the TMJs. So you have the hole in your head. Right anterior to that is your TMJs. Okay. All right. Let's keep on going. The motion of the TMJ in a closed mouth, the condyloid uh, does sit in, in, in the fossa in an open mouth. It does get disjointed, so it does move anteriorly. When we are evaluating for the TMJ, if we are taking x-rays of it, we do a comparison of both closed mouth and open mouth. Okay. Um, what's happened now is most of the studies for TMJs are done, can be done in CT, but it is done radiographically, including tomograms. You guys remember tomograms with the different slices? So we do that too for TMJs in both closed mouth and open mouth views. Can you, can you guys see the PNA of the ear? The PNA, oracle? What are this black stuff going on here? What's all this? The mastoid air cells. The mastoids. Yeah, some mastoids. Okay. All right. Not much going on. Okay. Joint classifications. The sutures. Uh, related to last week, so let's talk about joint classifications now. So the sutures are going to be fibrous or synarthroidal, which means immovable. The alveoli in the teeth are fibrous. The subclass or synarthroidal, also immovable. And the TMJs, they're freely movable, right? So it is synovial. Uh, it does contain some fluid to allow for free movement. And it is a glinglimus hinge type and also a gliding plane type. Okay, 
sinuses. Are we okay now? Okay. Paranasal sinuses, there are four sets. Frontal, associated with what? Frontal bone? Your frontal bone. The ethmoid. Hmm, yeah, maybe ethmoid. Would you guys like to have a test on this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the ethmoid is associated with the ethmoid bone, the sphenoid with the sphenoid bone, and the maxillary with the maxillary bones. Okay. So the projections that we use where you can see, all, I'm just going to throw this at you now so I don't forget. But the projection that we do to evaluate all of the four sinuses is a lateral view. That is a test question. So I'm just going to throw that at you. Okay? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> the best view the best for all four sinuses lateral, is the lateral. lateral. Okay, you're going to see all four in the lateral. Now, with, uh, with an AP or a PA, there's a lot of superimposition. So those aren't really demonstrated. Like for example, when you're looking at the, the lateral over here, um, the, the uh, ethmoid is going to be anterior to the, the sphenoid. Okay? So one is going to be superimposed over the other. So when you're doing it in AP or PA, you're seeing an, uh, a superimposition of the two sinuses. So again, that's why we say the lateral is going to be the best projection for the sinuses. All right. Oh, here's a better picture, okay. So in looking at this, um, the maxillary sinuses and the frontals are, are pretty obvious. We know the location of that. But the key here when we're looking for the sphenoid is first you look for the cella turcica and it's right below it. This is where you're gonna find the sphenoid. And then if you use this as your landmark, okay, now you know where the ethmoid is because it's gonna be anterior to that. Now, the, generally, the, the ethmoid lies right around the area of the infraorbital margin. So that's a good way to also lo localize where the ethmoids are located. Okay. Any questions here? You have this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I try to clean up the slides as best as possible so that way you guys can better understand some of the anatomy. At least that's how I better understand it. Okay, um, so the maxillary sinuses is found within the maxilla. They are located right above the upper teeth. And so these are some of the problems because they are so adjacent, okay, the teeth in relation to the, the floor of the maxilla. If you get a tooth infection, okay, where does it hurt? The infection spreads where? Didn't you say that earlier? I said, what was the purpose of the sinuses? And she said infections, yeah? yeah. So yeah, so if you get a toothache or tooth infection, it is going to affect your, your maxillary sinuses. So you get a tooth infection, you're going to feel it all up here on your, on your cheeks. Okay, right around the cheeks. All right. Um, another thing that I want you guys to write a note of is that when we're doing sinuses, Okay, because it is a cavity, we prefer to do the projections in an upright position. This is the only way, this is the <coughs> best way in evaluating for, um, for air and fluid levels. Even in CT, when the patient is laying down in the cradle, they're not laying supine. Guess how they're laying down? Have you guys ever seen a CT scan of a sinus? Mm -hmm. they're, liter they're laying on their belly, literally with their head up like this, as <laughs> they're being scanned. Yeah, and a CT, the scanner goes from front to back. Okay, because again, they're evaluating for that air and fluid level. That's the best way to do that. Okay, your frontal sinuses. Um, found in the frontal bone. They are rarely symmetrical. Rarely symmetrical. And you may have one set, you may have two, you may have three, or you may not have a frontal sinus at all. Okay? So it is very idiosyncratic. It all depends on that individual. So again, you may have one, two, three, or you may not have any demonstration of the frontal sinuses at all. And just because you don't see the frontal sinus doesn't mean it's filled with fluid. They just don't have it. Okay? Is it behind the frontal bone or inside? It's within, within the frontal bone. Are you when they actually show up? I've heard that children's 
don't have all of them then? Yeah, I don't think they start developing until in their adolescent years, like 13 or 14. I, th I think it's. I think you're right. I think it's all part of that uh, puberty thing. I'm just. It's not fact. I said I think. Yeah. Right. Okay. So don't <laughs> quote me on that. Not a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> not a fact. <laughs> Purely speculative.